from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster who's here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff so you could fall asleep. It's time for a silly friend who's in stripes right now. Believe it or not, I'm in stripes. Uh, I was trying to think of something silly, and I said, uh, you just said silly friend, but you don't have anything really silly going on. And then I said, I'm in stripes, right? Uh, that Striped striped pajamas. Uh, bedtime comes, and I want to go to bed. There goes Scoots in his striped pajamas. They're actually not pajamas. They're, rep- <laughs> they're repurposed clothing. Uh, made into, I mean, clothes I wear as pajamas, but I guess it's technically not pajamas because I don't wear them too bad, but I wear them, you know, (laughs) when I say, all right, I'm not leaving the house again. And later I'll get in bed in these clothes. I mean, but you know, whatever, I don't need to talk about when I'm, uh, uh, in less than pajamas. That's for sleep with, you know, this sleep with me after dark. That's never been launched before. But yeah, I'll ex- maybe I'll explain more in the intro because this is going on and on and on. Like, it's not anything super interesting either. By the way, if you fall asleep during it, don't worry. It's not like my pajamas are going to be revealed to be made of, uh, I don't know, some sort of like uh, interest of anything interesting. Uh, so I'll just tell you now. Swe- they're sweat. One, one is called, well, they're, they're sweatpants to me. But I think when I bought them, they were called like active pants or something. And um, the uh, it, the uh, the striped one is amazingly enough in, in, in what do they call that a thermal layer? It uh, an extra thick one. I love it. It's my favorite wintertime pajama shirt. That's not pajama. Long sleeves, and it's striped, black and gray stripes. Oh boy, breaking news. Sleep if you if uh if you're new, this is welcome. This is Sleep With Me. It's a podcast to take your mind off of stuff and keep you company so you fall can fall asleep. To be more like a friend talking to you so that you could drift off. It is very different. So give the show a few tries if you wish. That's just what most people uh that are regular listeners have said over the years. Oh, at first I didn't get it, or I was like, what, you're talking about pajamas? I thought this was a sleep pot. That's a normal reaction. Striped repurposed pajamas. Uh like uh, is that an is it could that be an industry? Could you are you an influencer in repurposed pajamas? I'd say sadly I'm not. There's probably something do it. There's probably plenty of people doing incredible things. Uh, repurposed underoo pillows, probably, or, you know, stuffed pet, you know, plush, plush, or who knows, whatever, some sort of keepsake. Uh, but anyway, no, all I can do is talk about my pajamas uh, that aren't really pajamas on more than one level uh, to, t- to take your mind off stuff and keep you company. So I'm glad you're here. Regular listeners, so glad you're here. We haven't talked about, I don't know if I've talked about my these, uh, these technically, uh, se- seasonally, my favorite pajama shirt. The pants, uh, the only advantage of the pants I have, one, unintentionally, they match my top. And two, I could, when I walk the dog, if my daughter was to see me in th- this outfit, she wouldn't be totally, I mean, she doesn't get embarrassed by me anymore or ever, but, uh, people don't honk at me and say, uh, you know, what <laughs> looks like you've lost your way or something like, uh, cause they're just normal active, the active pants or something. I don't know. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Give the show a few tries if you're new. Structurally, we got coming out. We got this uh, sponsor support, so you could listen for a. Then that's just a few minutes. And then there's a long meandering intro afterwards. That's meant to ease you into bedtime. Uh, then there'll be a bedtime story later on. And yeah, I'm glad you're here, and I really appreciate you checking the show out. And these sponsors are how we're able to do it for free twice a week. 
All right, everybody, this is Scoots here, and this is where I kind of talk about support for the show. You've probably been hearing me. But here's the thing. I'm only trying to get this message out to one out of 100 people. Like, if if you're that one out of 100 people, you're a regular listener, sleep with me. You get a lot out of the show. You listen to it on a regular basis. It makes your life better. That's 100 people, right? 100 regular listeners. I need one of you. Are you that one person who's willing to support the show right now, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus or set an alarm or a reminder right now to do it tomorrow. I don't know. Are you that, think about it, if you're that one person or not. And then if you are, I'm going to pause for a second and, and give you a second to uh, do one of those three things. Because if you're that one person uh, who's going to take action. You have the power to change the trajectory of the show, like the future of Sleep With Me in 2025, for you and 99 other people. It's kind of like you're getting insurance for your sleep and your you know, peace of mind at bedtime. You're supporting your boyfriend, but you're also supporting it for the other, other 99 people. So you might support the show for that if you're that one person. You might be that one person who wants more. You want all intro episodes. You want all night episodes. You want cool bonus episodes. You want ad-free episodes. But I hope you're that one person out of 99. If there's 99 people that are like, no way not interested, somebody else will do it. That's fine. I just need one person. So are you that one person who's willing to support the show? If you are right now or tomorrow, send a reminder and go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. If you're not in a position to support the show, don't worry about it. I'm on it. Your boyfriend is working on it. And we're here to keep you company and put you to sleep. And thank you so much uh, for counting on us to do that for you on a regular basis. Uh, thanks and good night. All right, everybody. I want to thank Claire and tonight's sponsor for supporting this episode and provide me with some samples. You know, I suffer from seasonal allergies. Not only do they get in the way of me living my life, they get in the way of me making this podcast to put you to sleep. Because when those allergies are really kicking in, I sound weird and I do not feel good at all. Luckily, for those of us who live with the symptoms of allergies, we can live the Claritin clear with Claritin D. The double action combination of prescription strength allergy medicine and the best decongestant available relieves sneezing, a runny nose, itchy and watery eyes, an itchy nose and throat, and sinus congestion and pressure with ease. And that's what I like about Claritin D. It covers all those bases. For me, I love the relief from the runny nose and the sinus pressure. Holy cow. Those two things combined. I'm, I'm like, the, the worst two symptoms I have at the exact same time. So I love the relief uh, Claritin brings. And I've been taking Claritin D this spring for this allergy season. And it's been a, j a game changer because I can go out on my runs and on my trail runs and not have to worry about, am I going to be able to record the podcast tomorrow? Because my nose is running and my sinuses are clogged. Ready to live life as if you don't have allergies? It's time to live Claritin clear. Fast and powerful relief is just a quick trip away. Find Claritin D at the pharmacy counter. Ask for Claritin D at your local pharmacy counter. You don't even need a prescription. Go to Claritin.com right now for a discount so you can live Claritin clear. Use as directed. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it is time to talk about the mattress I sleep in nightly. And tonight's sponsor, Helix, Helix Sleep. Take that quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep. And oh, how do I love my Helix. And not only do I love my Helix, my family members love their Helix. It just stayed at a family member's house, uh, and I saw my uh, nephew Daniel had a Helix. I believe his parents have a Helix Sleep too. So it's just so refreshing to know that I'm not the only one enjoying uh, sleeping on mine. But each one of us is different, right? And that's why Helix offers 20 unique mattresses, uh, including the award-winning Lux Collection, and the newly released Helix Elite Collection. There's mattresses for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress made just for kids. And the way you know which mattress is going to be best for you, the way you sleep, and your body is to take the Helix Sleep Quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. That's helixsleep.com slash sleep. 
That personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. And Helix knows you want to get to know your mattress, right? And you get to sleep on it in your own home. They offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. And since everybody's unique and everyone sleeps differently, Helix has different mattress models to choose from, designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. There's models with memory foam for pressure relief if you sleep on your side, responsive foam to cradle your body if you're a stomach or back sleeper. And way back when, when I took that Helix uh, sleep quiz, I got matched with the Helix Dusk. I I chose the Helix Dusk Lux. You know, I sleep on my stomach. I sleep on my side. I like to be cool. I love this mattress. Anytime I travel... I'm counting the days to get home and get in my Helix bed. And Helix is offering up to 30% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. That's helixsleep.com slash sleep. Thanks, everybody. All right, buddy. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. This may be the last Sleepy Supporter Zone you hear. We're making some changes to the show. Uh, our longtime editor, Carl W., who edited the Sleepy Supporter Zones uh, last month, uh, crossed over that great rainbow bridge uh, to the big farm in the sky where Carl could run with all those dogs that are up there. So all those sweet dogs are happy to have Carl uh, hanging with them, petting them, walking them. Question, though, for Carl, if you ever get back, like, uh, do the dogs need, is there, what's the leash situation? Like, I, I'm assuming, I don't want to assume there's no leashes in uh, the big farm, but we'll miss Carl, even though those dogs and all everybody else is happy to have him. He was such an amazing person to work with, and Carl's been working with the show since 2016, and Carl's a huge part of his communities, our community. He, you, there's so much work that Carl did for the show that you like. The, his, he worked so hard at not being heard on the show. Like that was his job and, and, and one of his superpowers. But his actions were heard. And so if you want to support two of the organizations that Carl supported in his memory, uh, we're going to have links to New York City Mesh and Sean Casey Animal Rescue in the show notes. Those were causes that Carl was involved in and close to his heart. So please consider supporting one of those two organizations. I'm not exactly sure what the uh, beginnings of the show are going to look like in the future moving forward. Um, just because, yeah, so uh, we'll just see. And uh, But, yeah, thanks so much for listening. And, uh, oh, uh, what else happens in the supporter zone? Is this where I say, oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show, including Carl. Uh, who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. And edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators You can support your scooter on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud that we could dance Rusty Biscuit, Lois, and I like banana. Leah does the transcripts. Thanks, Mystery Bard. Uh, and don't forget, if you want sleep phones, uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones, the most comfortable way to listen to sleep with me. Use sleep with me at checkout. And uh, what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever is keeping you awake, whether that's thoughts on your mind or things you're thinking about, about the past, present, the future, uh, whether it's uh, anything you're feeling, anything coming up for you emotionally, whether it's related to those thoughts or something else, emotions that are just there, 
or have been there or just, you know, coming up, uh, bubbling up to the surface or whatever. It could be physical sensations. I just talked to a friend who, like, their lack of sleep was because of physical sensations in their shoulder and, and it was been an ongoing thing and we talked about it a lot because it's not easy and that's just one of the things that uh, people don't talk about as much and I even, I even here I try to talk about it indirectly but yeah man and, and uh, just just really tough uh, that's another thing that just doesn't that keeps a lot of people awake and it's not easy and I'm here to take your mind off of it and keep you company and it could be any other a myriad of different things keep the listeners awake uh, but the only reason I bring up the myriad of things, uh, whether it's temporary or, you know, transitory or you've been dealing with it for a long time, is so you know you're not alone. Like, I'm here to help you, even if I'm not experiencing the same thing you are. There's a strong possibility I could relate to how you feel. But even if I can't relate, there's someone listening who can relate to how you feel that has been through something similar. And they care too. Like they literally, and I hope you become a regular listener and then you get to send out these, the, the, this is true. Like, uh, and I'm not usually like a, a person who would be described as woo woo, but, uh, I will say woo woo in this case in a positive way, because that person's caring about you knowing what you're going through. They are sending something across the deep, dark night for you. They are glad you're here because they found relief here or distraction here or someone to keep them company so they could fall asleep. So they're glad you're here and they know what you've been through and they can relate to it or they know what it was like for them. And uh, you, you know what I'm saying? And that's the most important thing I'll say this whole show. I'm glad you're here and I hope this show can help you because you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place you can get some rest uh, where your sleep uh doesn't come like where you, it's not a rigmarole, like a bedtime you could look forward to or at least feel neutral about. And yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, it's important because if you get the rest you need, your life is more manageable. Ideally, you could get the rest you need on a regular basis and be out there flourishing. So that's why I make the show. What I do is I send my voice across the deep, dark night. I use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders superfluous tangents so i go off topic i get mixed up i forget what i was talking about then i'm like what was it what was i talking about was i talking about pajamas have i talked about them enough probably not i'm really cozy in them too by the way i mean that's probably why it's on my mind also i i just noticed the stripes because i was saying something silly and then i said what is something as silly i could talk about without like forcing the silliness and I said, you're wearing striped pajamas. And then the silliness came out naturally out of that because some part of my brain's like, technically, they're not pajamas. And I'd say, well, I wear, well, wear them. So I do wear them as pajamas. No, you don't because pajamas are something you wear. I said, oh, you're right. I don't wear them in bed. Occasionally, I will if it's cold enough uh, for about five minutes. But, yeah, it need to be like I can't ha I mean, I have like a like a like a, a tiny amount of clothing on in bed. This is already too much, but, uh, which is, I, I don't know. I just need to, I don't know. Like, uh, let's just move on. You're right. Uh, um, but right now I am closed. Uh, I've got socks on. I got these sweatpants on. They're gray. And believe it or not, this, this is like how lucky I am that we get to work with sponsors and stuff like this. The, 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 whatever, the pants I'm wearing or sweatpants, I'm calling them active pants. Uh, it's from a sponsor from a long time ago. I still, still wear them, uh, still love them. The top is not, it's from a big company, um, like, uh, that has uni in, the, uh, the title of it. Uh, and I found th these are probably on like clearance. Uh, I have two ones that are like a thin layer, a gray one, a striped blue and black one that is not appealing, but very comfortable. And then this gray one is like a thicker one. I think it's from like thermal stuff, uh, thermal undershirt, but it is, uh, it's great. Uh, what was my point? Oh, I'm making a sleep podcast. Uh, so I send my, oh, lulling soothing, lulling, soothing tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents means 
what you just saw. I'll try to talk about one thing, then I'll get distracted and go off topic for a while. And I won't say anything important. Um, but yeah, and then, uh, you know, then I'll like I'll put in some filler words by accident. And then I'll try to return to describing what the show is. And uh, Creaky Dulcet Tones means my voice is not traditionally soothing, but I am here. I don't know. My, like, I'm here. To, I'm not. This That's the first thing that kind of I try to point out when halfway through the intro is that this is a podcast you don't necessarily listen to, even in the genre of sleep podcasts. Even when, when I came up with the idea of, like, uh, why aren't there podcasts to help grownups fall asleep? Even then, Sleep With Me was not exactly made to be listened to. It was kind of made to be barely listened to, just like if you had a friend. Like, let's say you have a roommate that talks a lot, but your roommate was cool with talking, and, uh, you were like, you could talk all you want. I'm going to barely, like, I'll barely listen to you. At some point I will fall asleep. If you're fine with that, that's going to work. Or listening to a sitcom on in the other room or calling someone or something else that's somewhat engaging, but that there's no pressure on your end to pay attention or no f FOMO, like, uh, so even me, really, like I hear from a lot of listeners and they uh, say, I wish I, I thought you said something silly. And then I forgot what it was. Uh, and then I said, like, was it? And then and then I asked, you know, at breakfast and I said, I have no idea. I think he was saying he wears socks occasionally. Oh, well, you know, that sounds like scoots. Oh, boy. He made an intro about wearing socks. No, but I'm sure he's made an intro about S-O-C-K-S's before. And you say, what does that mean? And I say, I don't know. It's just vaguely in his mind, I think, from an infomercial. Okay, well, I slept great last night. So it's a podcast that's just out of focus. You can, you could listen to it. You can listen to it. But there's no pressure to listen to it. And I'll just be, like, almost barely entertaining, uh, ideally. That's uh, that's one thing to know. The other thing to know is there's no pressure to fall asleep with this show. That's the reason the uh, podcast is over an hour, so you don't feel any pressure to fall asleep. You know I'm going to be here keeping you company whether you're awake or asleep. I'm going to be here to the very end because there are people listening who can't sleep at all, and I'm here to keep them company uh, whether like whether you're awake or asleep or people that need a break during the day listen. And so that's kind of my job here is uh, to do that. And what I'll do um, is just go on and on and on and, and, and try to distract you to be your boar friend, your boar sib, your boar bay, your boar bud, your boar bestie, your boars, your boar bee, your boar bra, your boar friend, your neighbor, uh, your friend in the deep dark. And keep you company, take your mind off of stuff. Uh, what else do you need to know? Oh, I forgot to mention, there's a website, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. So if you already know the show isn't going to work for you and you just don't like it or you just don't like me or you don't want to give it two or three tries, I mean, I would say just give it two or three tries. Any, I mean, well, definitely if you don't strong, if you have a strong distaste for me already, you don't need to do that. But yeah, you could check out sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. That has other sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff on there. You could check out. Um, and what I'll do is uh, keep you coming. Because most people get here, you're skeptical, you're doubtful, you're fed up, you can't sleep. Then you hear about a sleep podcast. What's that? You know, how's that? how could that possibly help me? R legitimate questions, right? Uh, and... Um, I don't know if I have a great answer. Like, uh, this is a sh the show. Yeah, it's a bit different. And, um, like you got to see if it works So you know, give it a few tries and see how it goes. That's just what, like most people's experiences. Cause you're all, when is this going to get, when is it going to get sleepy again? When are you, are you going to be counting down from a hundred or 99 or 10? And I say, well, I'd probably like, I wouldn't be, I don't know if I'd be good at any of those. But uh, I've, d I've probably done that before, but I can't remember. So you know, I'm just I'm just uh, doing this in my today. I'm recording this in my pajamas, so it's like uh, it's going to be extra cozy. 
I've also talked about co. Every once in a while, I come up with great names. I think we do. We know a cozy. Is that one of the dogs I've dog sat once? Is cozy? Does anybody know? I know whose dog it is because she was just in a robotics competition, and um. But uh, is that is is their dog cozy? I know do- cozy is a pretty good name for a pet. I think or. uh I guess she, like, is there a town, the ta- a town called Cozy? Like, uh, if Jessica Fletcher decided she didn't want to solve mysteries anymore, like, could, would she, like, uh, would she move to a town? For, I mean, Cabot Cove sounds pretty, re- it's got that cove in there. It's, you know, that sounds pretty good. Cozy and Cabot Cove, you know, that could be, she, she could have a sleep podcast, but a town called Cozy. Well, I'm not, you know, yeah. What else you got? Nothing. It's so cozy. No, nothing's going on. Uh, is it a sleepy town? Well, I mean, at, at bedtime it is, or, or nap time, a siesta time. But you know, it's just cozy here. Well, what's the difference between cozy? Oh, I man, come on. You, 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 we can't just give it away. You got to come here and visit. Come and find out for yourself. Come, come see the cozy. What puts the cos and the z in cozy? We don't, you know, we don't need to advertise. It's a town called Cozy. Our co- oh, T Cozy, right? Is that another thing that um, I'm, I'm, I got to get back to this podcast? So I'm packing my bags for Cozy. Uh, I'm leaving on a jet plane, go, going to Cozy to get Cozy. Uh, I mean, it, I'd be they'd be like, "What happened to Scooter?" Well, he was ban- he couldn't sit still, and co- he he went to the town of Cozy. But everywhere he goes, you know, he brings himself with him. So he was unable to sit still in Cozy, and he violated the three principles of the town of Cozy that are right on the thing outside population. These are the three principles of the town of Cozy. Please abide. And he couldn't, he couldn't, uh, like, uh, he, he just wasn't a good fit. Pretty ironic, you know. He's the sleep podcaster. He invented the town of Cozy. And he just couldn't make it work there. Uh, so he went back and uh, unfortunately he had sold his uh, uh, pseudo pajamas that he just thought of another term. Because I guess that's what I'm wearing. Pseudo, I, I mean, I needed some linguists to let me know about this, but uh, am I wearing pseudo pajamas? Uh, I don't know. Because like, I don't know what a pseudo, like, that just sounds like something I would say, like, it used to be something I would say when I tried to sound smart, but so many people excuse themselves to use the restroom that I've stopped trying to sound smart. I say, well, that sounds like a case of pseudo pajamas to me. Excuse me, I've got a, I've got a, um, I've got a chicken for a flight. Uh, okay, that was another thing that happened to me in Cozy. And I said, I can't be cozy here. Oh, but I can tell you about the sleep I so, so if you're skeptical or doubtful, give it a few tries, see how it goes. The only other thing I like to point out in the intros is the structure of the show. Because the structure of the show is very intentional. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, it, I'll just explain it to you. Because it does make a lot of new people uh, furrows their brow, we'll say, in the softest way. It does make some non-cozy. It feels non-cozy to a lot of new people. Even some regular listeners, uh, but there is a reason we do the, the structure the way we do it. Uh, we start off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So if you feel seen and welcomed in and you do hear something silly or relaxing, you say, okay, I could check that podcast out. I kind of get the tone. Then there's sponsor support, so you could listen for free if you want to, or you could support the sponsors and, and feel involved. If you prefer not to listen to sponsor stuff, you could support the show on Sleep With Me Plus directly or by referring people to the podcast. Uh, then after the support is a long, meandering intro. It is separate from the support and a show within a show. I think we proved that once again tonight. Uh where I try to explain what the podcast is. I follow a very familiar structure, but the intro is, has something unexpected. I mean, Jessica Fletcher's made quite a few appearances in the intros because she's, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big Angela Lansbury fan. But um, never thought, I mean, like, uh, I, like, I, I don't know what to, when I can start writing Jessica Fletcher fan fiction. I, I don't have time to, unfortunately, but 
like uh, town called Cozy. I mean, we did write that one one mystery uh, with uh, I can't remember any of the characters now. But uh, so anyway, I get oh, so the intro goes on and on and on. Now the intro is not designed to put you to sleep. It may put you to sleep, and that's great. It does put a small percentage of people to sleep, but for most people. It's a buffer. It's easing you into bedtime as you're getting ready for bed, as you're unwinding, as you're in bed getting comfortable. The intro is kind of the transition. And that's what works in my personal life. Most studies about sleep show that having a wind down really sets the mood for going to sleep. Getting cozy. I mean, really, it is about getting cozy and, and just having something that you look forward to or feel neutral about that helps you wind down. And uh, the reason it's different every time is I think that's more effective than just having a repetitive intro and just weird stuff comes up. <laughs> like when I be my, when I let my guard down and be myself, you never know how it's going to go. Then after the intro is uh, support, then there'll be our episodically modular series multiplex and it's relaxing, kids uh, hanging out uh, in a mall, and uh, some thank yous at the end. So it's a structure show. It's why I make the show. I'm really glad you're here. I really appreciate your time and coming by. And uh, thanks again. You know, I work really hard. So do a team of people. We yearn and strive. We really want to help you fall asleep. So one more time, thanks again for coming by. And here's how we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, everybody, I want to thank Claire and tonight's sponsor for supporting this episode and provide me with some samples. You know, I suffer from seasonal allergies. Not only do they get in the way of me living my life, they get in the way of me making this podcast to put you to sleep because when those allergies are really kicking in, I sound weird and I do not feel good at all. Luckily, for those of us who live with the symptoms of allergies, we can live a Claritin clear with Claritin D. The double action combination of prescription strength allergy medicine and the best decongestant available relieves sneezing, a runny nose, itchy and watery eyes, an itchy nose and throat, and sinus congestion and pressure with ease. And that's what I like about Claritin D. It covers all those bases. For me, I love the relief from the runny nose and the sinus pressure. Holy cow. Those two things combined. I'm I'm like the the worst two symptoms I have at the exact same time. So I love the relief uh, Claritin brings. And I've been taking Claritin D this spring for this allergy season. And it's been a a game changer because I can go out on my runs and on my trail runs and not have to worry about, am I going to be able to record the podcast tomorrow because my nose is running and my sinuses are clogged? Ready to live life as if you don't have allergies? It's time to live Claritin clear. Fast and powerful relief is just a quick trip away. Find Claritin D at the pharmacy counter. Ask for Claritin D at your local pharmacy counter. You don't even need a prescription. Go to Claritin.com right now for a discount so you can live Claritin clear. Use as directed. Thanks, everybody. Support for Sleep With Me comes from Odoo. What is Odoo? Well, Odoo is a lot of things. Odoo is award-winning management software. Odoo is total control of your entire company in one place. Odoo is a suite of fully integrated applications for CRM, accounting, sales, HR, inventory, manufacturing, and, and everything in between. Basically, Odoo is what your business needs to succeed. So if you're ready to get more done in less time, visit odoo.com slash with me. That's O-D-O-O dot com slash with me. Odoo, business management made simple. Everybody, Scoots here. It's time for episodically a modular series. Uh, what's the name of this one? Multiplex. And Multiplex is a story about uh, four friends in a shopping mall uh, after hours helping people. And they're helping customers that came to the mall by way of the Multiplex. Uh, Famous film friends. And uh, our four friends are helping, you know, helping them find their way. And uh, episode, if you're new to Sleep With Me, welcome. Glad you're still listening. Uh, this is the bedtime story portion. 
uh, of the show. And this is where I kind of take your mind off of stuff and try to ease you into uh, bedtime. And the way we do it is, uh, is that, uh, what, let's see, how do we do it? It's, uh, um, just trying to think of how to introduce this. So, so episodically modular, so the bedtime story is episodically modular. It means, uh, it has some seriality to it, but you could listen to them in any order and out of order. And you don't have to listen to them completely. If you listen to it again, it'll make it, it, it sleep with me it, it, stories. They make just as little sense on the fifth listen as they did on the first. Uh, sometimes even less. I just listened to the episode preceding this one a few times, and boy, was I confused. <laughs> and I make it. Uh, but that's what it means. Like, if you are a completist, you could listen to these episodes in order, but you don't need to. Don't worry. I'm going to, the main character, the narrator is going to fill you in on everything. I'm just here to put you at ease and, and, and to let you know you, you won't be, you'll be so lost, you won't be lost at all if you catch my drift. And so without further ado, though, to set everything up is our Hollywood announcer. He comes all the way. I mean, sometimes he's come from Hollywood, right? North Hollywood, West Hollywood, Hollywood. You know, we love it. Uh, but sometimes he comes from the greater Los Angeles area. But you want to talk about what's the greater of the Los Angeles area. Uh, I would say, you like... Uh, you know what I mean? If, I, like, remember when he's looking at me inquisi quizzically, like he's wondering, remember like, like, uh, when I talk about strange things we learned as children, there was a big focus on less than equal than and more than symbols. I don't know if they anticipated a future where we could only communicate by, uh, what are those called? Uh, uh, like, it's not out, like, uh, you know what I'm like? You could just say less than or more than, or you could even use body language to can you know, because it was very confusing, especially someone like me who had some differences in how I learned things. They say, "Well, that one's trying to have a snack on the other word," so that's how you know it's less than or greater than. And I say, "Okay," and then there's sometimes there's a line under that. What does that mean? And that's the kind of thing when I think about the greater Los Angeles area, I think it was greater Los Angeles area is pretty darn great. Uh, but you know, when I think about the greater things, so not just one thing, not the greatest Los Angeles, the greatest thing in the Los Angeles area, but I would say, uh, he, he is one of my favorite things, my greatest things, uh, in the greater Los Angeles area especially like whispers on his, uh, his lips, uh, and is, is like, uh, uh, something bumbles on roses and, uh, he makes my heart feel like it's like tied up uh, in, uh, paper and string, uh, in a good way. I don't know if that, that's not really a good, greatest image, uh, like, uh, but, uh, do drop and lemons uh, to make lemonade. He is one of my greatest, of the greater Los Angeles, one of the greatest things, in my opinion, of the greater Los Angeles area. And without a doubt, one of my favorite things, especially when he's so silent, like he's being right now. He, the only, you know, I just learned, I just realized this after we've been working together, what, 100 years? Uh by the, you know, I didn't, I, I've been trying to tell him to be quiet the whole time. All I have to do is compliment him in a genuine way. And when I do that, of course I go off topic and get mixed up, but, uh, he goes, he's so silent when I'm complimenting him. So moving forward, I'll always be compliment and I will always compliment you. So without further ado, our Hollywood announcer, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Ah, uh, so friends beyond the binaries, so ladies and gentlemen, so boys and girls, it's time to journey into a shopping mall for multiplex clickety clickety clack uh, whoosh. Okay, that was that was interesting. That was good. Uh, I mean, that was uh, by the way, that was excellent. Uh, I cannot compliment you enough on that intro. And he's, he, it's working. So he's going to go lie down in my bed and not move for a while. 
so um, he's so good at that it, that uh, it always amazes me. Up until now, it never amazed me. I mean, it did amaze me on one level, but not in a level that was uh, wor- But he's always worthy of compliments. And somehow I'll be recording this compl- <laughs> this podcast and complimenting him in my mind. That's Mr. Antonio Banderas. This is a uh, multiplex. Good evening, everybody. My name's Wyatt, and uh, I'm here uh, to tell you a tale. I don't know if you've been listening to my previous tales, so just in case you haven't, I'm going to tell, tell you everything you need to know. My name's Wyatt. I'm recording these audios to tell a tale that has never been told before. And it's an adventure, which I've been telling in multiple parts. It's a true adventure in, uh, that some friends and I, I had long ago. One of the reasons I'm telling, the, the recording this at least, I don't know if I'll release it or maybe I'll release it when I, uh, you know, transverse the next transverse plane. But, you know, a lot, like, since there's the, the uh, places where watch, when I'm recording this, there's places where people watch video on the internet. And sometimes it's old video that people discover and they say, hey, have you checked this out? And... Each large metropolitan area, once upon a time, not only did they have like, they had, they needed to fill, uh, how do I explain this? There were shows that weren't popular shows. There were local TV shows, kind of like a str- that you'd stream. I mean, this was kind of like the internet before the internet, including people that made shows for unpaid reasons, just out of like for fun. And that's what I did. I made a show, uh, and uh, like uh, maybe one day I'll even tell you the name of it, but uh, where I would show movies that you would watch uh, at sleepover parties, or when you want to, you know, when you want to be in the autumn season mood. And in between, sometimes we do we we do interviews, and a lot of the interviews were people involved in that industry or the comic book industry, the toy industry. Uh, that would have been interesting to the people watching the show. Someone I never interviewed, Ray Harryhausen, would be one person. Maybe you could look that up. And, uh, but, uh, like, I had a lot of interviews that none of the other hosts had. And people went out, like, no, like, no one thought any of it. We didn't have a big audience back then. And people didn't really think anything of it. They said, wow, wow. Uh, why it really interviews cool people and uh, how does he, who does the makeup and all that kind of stuff. Cause the people uh, I interviewed seemed like they had makeup on or costumes, disguises. And then recently in the past few years, these videos have been discovered. Luckily they got digitized and uh, I guess not so luckily in some sense they got put on the internet and people saw them and they said, uh, these interviews are amazing. Even if you pause it, it's hard to tell what the makeup techniques were and what kind of, who were these performers? And I'm here to set the record straight and say none of those, those are real people I was interviewing. They weren't wearing makeup. They weren't in costume. They are people I met on this adventure who would come back, you know, who I reached back out to. Now, at the time, I knew people would think they were just people in makeup. But believe it or not, that's not really the reason I'm telling the story. I'm telling the story because a lot of stories get told, right? And a lot of stories get remembered. Now, public access television was a place you could do something and you wouldn't get remembered in a sense. You wouldn't get noticed. But you could do, you could make something. And I don't even know if that's an important point. But but the point is, like, there's not a lot of uh, adventures that get glorified where... Yeah, maybe you get noticed later on for interviewing people and may, that people thought were in makeup and you're telling them there's not. But a more important thing to point out is that my friends and I, we we're all uh, about to graduate high school. And we all had these paths laid out for us. Uh, maybe you'd call them A-type paths or uh, roads to success. And who knows if we walked fully walked that road to success, where it would have led us, right? But the expectations were each of us would walk our own individual path. Uh, maybe we'd end up in a school with Ivy, or maybe we'd end up somewhere after that school. 
doing amazing things uh, and uh, be out there changing the world. That's what they, you know, go out there and change the world, uh, be a success. But the strangest thing was when we, so that's where we were headed and not in any way like we had to. We were fully choosing, I mean, as much as a few kids can. Like, those were not just the dreams of the authority figures in our lives. There was, those were our, our dreams, too. But this adventure changed those dreams, and it changed our trajectory in where we set aside those expectations and said, what would it be like uh, not to strive for greatness? But not to, like, uh, say, I'm not going to do nothing either. What would it be like to be in the middle? And there's no adventures that get told where the heroes end up in the middle. Just living and doing stuff, right? Uh, I I think, uh, I don't understand why. And I think that I'm probably doing a disservice because this is quite the adventure. uh, That So so it's easy. So it's like, why would you finish it? And you're just going to be... you know, a couple of plain old planes and they say, yeah, we're pretty plain, uh, doing, doing stuff and living life, uh, among people. Uh, yeah, I'm not the mayor. None of us were, we're just townspeople, extras or bad, you know, but this was so, I don't know. That's what makes me want to tell this story, but the story it, the, the the other irony is the story and the adventure is worthy of the results because the results, I'll tell you, I'll share it with you right now, pretty darn sweet. My friends, I keep in touch with them. Their lives pretty darn sweet too, right in the middle with everybody else. Uh, but you see, but why? I, I get myself mixed up because, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of my friends. My friends were uh, uh, Santos, San, Josie, uh, and uh, Boyd was someone we was an associate, a schoolmate of ours, but not really a friend. But we became friends uh, through this adventure. And the adventure had started when I found out I didn't get a scholarship. Uh, I kind of didn't do great on the last few parts of the scholarship. Uh, but I thought I, I, they, those were technicalities. We thought, uh, but ended up I I didn't I, I uh, didn't work out for me, and so I was a little bit down because uh, that's where I thought my path was headed, and uh, thought I'd botched it, you know. And we were playing mini golf, and that's where we ran into Boyd, who had come through a, a more or less a tunnel. We, it's a co- technically called a culvert that ran from a mini golf place. Uh, underneath a, a, a very busy road and linked up with some water drainage systems and, uh, you know, water control areas. And if you fo- we followed those uh, into a shopping mall that had been closed for quite some time. And this was the glory days of the shopping mall. The main reason we thought the mall had been closed was because, because there was a bigger one not that far down the street and there was a bigger one than that getting built. And uh, so this mall had uh, had just been inoperable, but Boyd had discovered that the sto- one particular store that Boyd had discovered in the mall still was stocked full of concentrate, Julius J. Juice concentrate, to make some sort of juice like orange juice, but a little bit fancier. Now, th- this company, Julius J. Juice, had gone out of business uh, years prior around the same time the mall had gone out of business. Well, so Boyd said, this stuff is just sitting in there. It's concentrated Julius J. Juice, pretty large, number 10 cans, I think they're called, and they have value. Boyd had already been on what would one day become the Internet, uh, and Boyd could sell these Julius J. Juices, cans of it, for a significant amount of money and all profit other than labor, uh, and Boyd was willing to split the, split the money with us if we helped the Boyd get the Julius J. Juice concentrate out of the mall. Now, maybe you could say this was gray area or it was totally fine, but it didn't seem wrong to us. I mean, some things, it seemed like, uh, like a little bit of a rebellion 
But Boyd said this company closed, went out of business, liquidated. The mall uh, closed, uh, now owned by the city or the county or something. So this is just like uh, like unclaimed. Uh, it, it's just there for the taking. And uh, so we said, okay, let's let's do it uh, now. We, so we set out to uh, go get these cans of Julius J. Juice, bring them back through the culvert, load them in a truck, uh, store them while Boyd sold them off. And it would be a significant amount of money if we had moved all the cans of juice out of the mall. So much so that I probably could have uh, still gone to uh, the, hall, like, uh, the halls of ivy and continued on my path until maybe, you know, I'd probably need another scholarship, but not the big one I was going to get. So that's what we had intended to do, but we got sidetracked. As soon as we started, we started meeting people in the mall that needed our help and then meeting people that had somehow come out of movies into the mall who needed our help. Uh, Someone that wore a lot of scarves, uh, someone named Franny, who was an amalgamation of people. And we thought at first we were in some sort of immersive adventure theater like you would see nowadays, like a, you know, immersive theater. But it it went on for a few days and, and there was just also strange things. The malls, the malls clean. The mall was fully stocked. The stores looked like they'd just closed. There was workers, but there was something unreal about it. Uh, we lost track of day and night. And then we realized that time had slowed down and that uh, some, something was happening in the mall where for every a day passing in the mall, an hour was passing in, in your world or my world or our world. And right around the time we discovered that, we met uh, Crispy Commander, or the C- Commander Crunch, the Crispy Commander, the C- you know, the most one of the most famous serial uh, serial heroes out there. You know, uh, breakfast time. You know, uh, get ready, breakfast time. Uh, so, uh, but like a real version, not a plush. Could have been an animatronic, but. Uh, at this point, we had uh, suspended our disbelief, and we found the uh, crispy commander, uh, Commander Crunch, in inside of a cuckoo clock sleeping. And Commander Crunch said, uh, "Hey, I've been. This is the, basically the summary. Because right when I'm picking up this tale, it comes right after this conversation. But Commander Crunch said, been watching you helping these uh, uh, people that came from the movies.'" And you're try- I see you trying to help them, and I think that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm trying to help them too. In fact, I, I like I, I like I have a proposal. If you keep helping them, when we would help someone from the movies, the end result would be they would return to their movie. It would end differently, and it would become a serial commercial. So the fact we we're talking to a serial mascot, using your ter- your your world's terms, not my terms. Uh, kind of made some sense in that context and that we're in a world, well, I mean, you, you, this t- current time has more things like a, a, a transverse plane, an intersection of universes kind of, but an intentional one. And that's what uh, C- Com- Commander Crunch had explained to us. Uh, this is part of the transverse plane and uh, these people are coming here for help for a reason. And if you help them, I found a way through the serial commercials to monetize it. Uh, so I'll also pay you for helping. And you're doing the right thing. And time has slowed, so no one is missing you yet because you all said you were sleeping over at each other's houses or going camping for the weekend. I can't even remember what fib we told at the time. And so we said, okay. Uh, let us think, Boyd said, well, let us think about it. We're going to sleep on it. And so we slept and so we awoke and then we discussed things. Uh, and one thing came up, but which we posed, uh, to Commander Crunch, the crispy commander, who, who had gone back to sleep inside of a cuckoo clock. Uh, we said, Hey, okay. So we kind of get it right. Uh, we're supposed to help you. And, uh, like, uh, you know, you, you're saying you're going to pay us and it's the right thing to do. 
Um, but what if we said no, right? We were thinking, you know, could we still say no? Because we were trying to build a consensus between the four of us. And, you know, being teenagers, just saying we have to help, even if it's the right thing and we're getting paid, uh, it's not an easy thing to swallow for teenagers. Uh, suggested thing, that's a good idea. And so we said, uh, you know, what would happen, you know, what if we don't help? Like, like what if we don't help you? What if we don't want to help? Uh, and uh, Chris, Commander Crunch, crispy Commander said, good question. That's a good question. It's, I knew I chose the right, uh, right, right people for this mission or these missions. And uh, crispy Commander paused and said, well, how many screen, how many screens are at the multiplex? And we said, well, do you, like 10. They used to be, you know, they had like doubled the amount, you know, they cut the screen sizes down and doubled the amount of screens. Uh, maybe close, I don't remember, but yeah, there's 10 screens. All right, and how many people have you helped? And we said two, and uh, Crispy Commander said, okay, so eight eight screens, right? And we said, yeah, and said, so, okay, so, and, and we're going to assume that more uh, friends are coming, Uh I, I think that's the case. We could agree on that. And we said, maybe, maybe, maybe. And uh, then we said, so I said, okay, so let's just say one or two more come, right? And they don't get helped because you're not here. Like, maybe I could help them. The Chris, you know, I am the crispy c c commander, Commander Crunch. And I could try to help them. But, you know, I'm I'm not, uh, not the same as you. I, I, I'm from another world also. Probably should be obvious. Uh, so I'm still trying, you know, it's weird to have, uh, our universes are very similar, but there's differences. Uh, and so there might be things that I think I understand that I don't understand. So I might not be totally equipped to help them. So that's, so then if I can't help them, uh, like, uh, what would happen if they got in a frowny faced mood? like the kind of mood they're in in the movies before you help them. Well, they've been really pleasant to work with, right? And we said, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Right, but in the movies, they're not pleasant uh, to work with, right? And we said, yeah, and I said, well, what if one somehow snuck out of here, right? Uh, I mean, you got in here, like, uh, what if one got out and, you know, went and visited your, you know, anybody's house, but it could be your house, uh, or, you know, your, your, your cousins or your, your sisters or your younger brothers or whatever it is. Uh, and they visited there and they were in a frowny faced mood. And they said, they talked to someone in your family very sternly in an unkind way, you know, with, uh, with like, uh, and they talked about long-term consequences with your, you know, what, what, what would, uh, you know, that could happen, right? And we said, I guess so, but we don't still don't understand why this is happening. And, and, uh, and yeah, and, and, and Chris, we may say, yeah, right. This is just, you know, we're just speculating. You're right. Could, it could happen, but it doesn't mean it will. But the other thing is, uh, I don't think we're the only ones that know about this, right? Uh, I only woke up in this clock when you woke me up, but I've been here a little time, but someone else has been here like, uh, you notice, like, the fences are a different age than the shopping mall, right? Someone put those up, uh, and someone put them up so that those friends would stay here, right? Why do you think it's so hard? Why, why do you think it's been so hard for you to leave? Uh, you did find a way in, and yeah, that's great. Uh, so there probably is a way back out. But maybe that person or people, and why, if they know, or they know what's happening, don't you think they probably have some reason? Uh, like, if you were, if you were in the position where you could buy an entire shopping mall and take it over, and you knew something from the movies was becoming real, do you think that anybody would have any motivations? Have you ever read any fictional books uh, or seen any movies that could compare with this? And we all looked at each other. Of course we had. Of course, of course. Uh, probably some sort of cold, you know, the cold disagreements you talk about in your history classes. Uh, you know, I predate the cold disagreements. Uh, 
of your history classes. I've been around. That's why I'm the crispy commander, uh, commander, you know, the commander, you know, commander crisp, uh, commander crunch, uh, the crispy commander is, uh, to kind of get, was kind of boost people's spirits and give them something to eat. Anyway, not important about the history of cereal and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, something else could be at foot, but sure, you could still leave. Uh, and I understand it. You know, maybe some other kids will find their way here and help me. You know, you could even probably, you probably still get the rest of those cans of juice if you want and go. That's fine. And if it's fine with you, it's fine. You know, it's fine with me. It's not going to, I'm not going to, um, but I'm just going to go back to sleep and then I'll try to figure, st- I've been sleeping a lot, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I just wonder what the ulterior motive is if there is one, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, I'm just a serial based. I have no idea. Like, I, to be honest, I, I kind of only have vague memories of who I am. But yeah, if it won't bother you, just take the juice and go. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. So if you don't want, if you say no, there's no, there's no consequence to it. Uh, but I, I think that, that uh, the crispy commander knew what he was saying to us, right? Because there was just enough of a door open to close the door on us leaving. Because he said, well, even if this is just speculation. Yeah, what would happen if Franny was frowny faced? Because uh, Franny was kind of like the Incredible Green Being in the in the comic books, uh, and the Incredible Green Being, uh, Hulk, when when they're grouchy, they would um, uh, even unintentionally, you know, they could you know break dishes and stuff like that, spill milk. Uh, if they're going to spill milk at our house, uh, there might be people with tears over the spilled milk or the broken dishes. So we couldn't let that happen. So we said, okay, okay, well, we're in, we're in. Uh, where do we start? And uh, Commander Crunch said, I don't, I don't know. Where did you start last time? Uh, we said in the mall. And Commander Crunch said, well, then go, I don't know where to start. Like, uh, I don't know everything. And we said, well, like the other two times, it kind of happened by accident. Uh, and Commander Crunch said, by accident, then, uh, well, I don't know. Where, where, if you were going to start somewhere, where would you start? And we said, well, the movies, I guess. So we'd double check and see if any movies are playing. And uh, Commander Crunch just nodded. So then we headed back to the movie theater, the multiplex. And we could hear we could hear stuff, uh, so we knew a movie was playing. And then we went into the uh, initially went into the theater, and we were, we heard uh, more than one movie because uh, it, it uh, theaters one, two, and three were on our left, uh, and theaters three, four, and five, and then you, c- c- the other theaters. I'll explain another time, right? One, two, three. Four, five, six, I'm sorry. So we could hear something coming from theater one. We had already been in theater two and three. But we could also hear something from like four, five, or six. Uh, couldn't figure out that one because it was lower. We said, wait a second, is there two movies playing? And then we were going back and forth. But the movie in one was definitely more uh, closer, louder, and they said, it sounds like kind of like operatic music. Maybe it's just a music track, like an opera music, like music uh, in the other one. Maybe it's not even a movie. And so we headed in, we, we decided, let's just go to theater one. It sounds like a movie. It definitely you can hear dialogue. All right. So, so we opened the door and we went in and we got to go around the corner first. But we could already hear uh, that uh, it was pretty late in the movie. And it was a movie uh, uh, called Count, uh, the, the Count, uh, and uh, it's a pretty famous film, a film we had seen many times before. And another book we had read is, is uh, some of us, I guess not all of us, because it was uh, the book is a little bit different, but uh, we sat and watched the movie because uh, we, li- we liked it. Uh, and we started to kind of speculate even, like, okay, so is it going to be, 
well, couldn't it be somebody else we help? Maybe, and we're all like, well, who would you want to help? Uh, Renfield, Mina, Harker, Van Helsing, uh, or Count. Uh, we, uh, I think uh, there's somebody else uh, that I had a crush on, too. Oh, Lucy, right. Lucy, Lucy, yeah. So we kind of went back and forth, and then the movie ended, and then it restarted again. And uh, we looked around and said, okay, I guess we got to figure out. So where we, 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 we got to figure out, like, uh, where we're going to find the count, right? And, you know, this is a famous movie based on, uh, well, to be honest, I don't know if that was the first uh, example of that. Uh, but uh, we said, well, where will we find somebody? They like to, they like, you know, they have very sensitive eyesight, so they like to be in a low-light environment. And they also prefer, uh, you know, they have, uh, like, certain beverage choices, uh, uh, like a tomato, you know, tomato, tomato, what do they call that? Uh, what's that one called? Uh, like tomato juice, tomato cocktail type drinks. And we're like, okay, like, there's, uh, so we started kind of just being like, we, I guess we should walk around, but you're right, where would they be? And then we're also kind of like, where in the movie does the count need help? Uh, because uh, we said, okay, so basics of the movie is it's got a little bit of a love story, forlorn love story, friendship type thing, and more between, uh, like, you have the mentorship, uh, a professional friendship relationship, a love story, a feel like a sweaty back story, and also like uh, doesn't do, the count moves because uh, count lives in kind of like opulence far far away. So okay, and then a lot of le- like a lot of diaries and letters, uh, but that doesn't help us like where we would find them. Uh, it was like okay, well, but okay, brainstorm it right. Okay, so we said, like, someplace dark. Uh, uh, and then we said, wait a second, like, hold on. Like, uh, do we want to help? Like, what if it is the Count? Like, isn't this one different? Because the Count is not, uh, re- like, uh, redeeming qualities. Like, Franny had redeeming qualities because Victor was kind of the... Um, so when we went back to hoping that it wasn't the Count we were going to help. Uh, you know, maybe it's Lucy. I mean, we all were like, it'd be great if we could help Lucy. Or Mina, and they said, or you know, uh, Ren, maybe Renfield. I don't know, because we were like, uh, also, so Franny and the um, our our friend Mommy, they both were kind of uh, society. The 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 societies they were in kind of like uh, changed the rules in a sense. And we're like, does that apply here to the count? Uh, because, uh, or does the count like have any redeeming qualities below the surface? On the surface, you know, pl- probably plenty of them. Po- I mean, I guess if you count magical powers, but we'll still say that's a surface level thing. So we were really talking this out. Then we were like, okay, but where would we go? Uh, and, uh, like, what place is, like, a place where we'd, uh, like, uh, and we said, well, that place that sells the fancy stuff, uh, like sculptures and fancy expensive lamps, rugs. So we didn't even know what that place was called. And we were always like, uh, the dad den, like any store selling den. We said, okay, like a den. Yeah, at least it's in the title. Uh, like, uh. Oh, like, isn't there, like, a wine cave place? Okay, so we'll check that one. That, okay, that could be it. Uh, there's a bank. Uh, there's a, still a bank and a post office somewhere in the mall. We haven't stopped at those. They said coffee. So, so what ended up happening, I mean, I guess we were also discussing this while we were walking. Because we are also like, should we even, like, I guess if they become, a, like, a, I don't know. We're having second thoughts, I, I would say. With uh, And this, what if this person's not nice? Because I think the other thing was before this, our expectations were much different. We had been led 
and accidentally stumbled upon it, usually with a worker. And then we're like, wait a second, we didn't, we, usually we help a worker first. So we say, okay, well, let's just check all those shops, and none of those shops worked out. Uh, and the mall gates had gone up again, so we didn't couldn't leave. All the exits uh, weren't accessible, but the whole mall was accessible again. So then we're just kind of walking up and down, trying to like look for, like in in each place, but not really go in. And uh, that's when we got a little jumpy. But one of the corner uh, places uh, near the center of the mall, we got a little jumpy jump because we saw. Um, I don't know if we saw something or heard, we saw something which was like, uh, huh, is that some sort of shadow? And uh, then we said, wait a second, is that a promotional thing? And then we heard something that sounded like a sound, not a, like a sound, like a sound, like uh, a muffled sound, which was what we were kind of listening for. And then we got into a disagreement about the name of this place because, uh, I mean, the name of the place was Stalin's, uh, not Stalin, not Stalin, Stolen, not, but I think it's called, we called it Stolen's, uh, at least at my house. My friends didn't even know any of this history, but I think it was Stalin's, uh, which I guess it wasn't that name for very long, obviously, but I think it was S-T-O-L-E, I don't know, something was, it was spelled like that, not like Stalin or st- st- Stalin. But originally it changed names already twice. It was Julie Child's Chocolates. Then it was Julie's Chocolates. Then it became Stalin, which had a European sound to it. Uh, but the funny thing is, because my family would always talk about it, because they were big Julia Childs fans. And they said, like, uh, we, we would never, we were not allowed to eat chocolate from Julie Childs chocolates or Julie's chocolates or Stolen's chocolates. Because it turned out that uh, my family said, both my parents, they were huge Julia Childs fans. They would make us dinner, we would watch the show. She was a TV host on uh, PBS uh, to cook, uh, give cooking lessons or cooked. They said, yeah, the place is Julie Childs. Uh, they named it uh, to sound like her, but it's not Julia Childs. It's Julie Childs Chocolates. And eventually it took her a few different tries to say, hey, that's my name, you're, you're inferring that I own this chocolate place and I don't. Or you're just using my name, the fanciness that sounds similar to my name to make your chocolate. And that's when they renamed it Julie's Chocolates from Julie Childs. Uh, and then they, it just was ironic that they called it Stalin. Because the other thing was the business model was based on somebody else's idea, too. So my parents had no patience for the place. So those very popular. I still don't understand if that many people are buying box chocolates. I mean, I know they did, like, uh, fundraisers from school that I, my parents would say we declined to participate. For, like, they would even say it. A joke, they'd say, for the love of Julia Childs, uh, this is not, we're not selling these chocolate uh, or these gift certificates. Uh, like, uh, because, like, so anyway, just, it was just a strange side note. Okay. So anyway, that's where things were coming from. So we go in there and what we thought was a shadow was a life-size chocolate sculpture. So that calmed us, but then we realized the muffling, muffled sounds were coming from the life-size chocolate sculpture. And we said, the sounds are coming from life. To life. And we said, hello, is somebody? And they said, they were kind of saying, like mumbling back. Uh, and uh, we're, we're then they, you know, basically indicating they were stuck inside a hollow, they were inside a chocolate sculpture, which obviously we figured, okay, this is our employee that needs our help. So we start breaking apart the chocolate sculpture. And they said, they were like, don't, don't like, uh, don't like, don't watch my, uh, my hands and face. Please don't watch my hands and face, uh, not near my hands and face. 
Which we said, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, like, uh, so we broke off, like, their back and their chest and around their legs uh, and the back of their head. And uh, now looking back at it, it was v- like, uh, anyway, we, it was, it, we should have known, right? But we break it off, and the person is still pretty covered in chocolate. Uh, and we get them off, and it takes takes quite some time. And, like, they're, they're uh, spitting out chocolate. They were saying that, like, they like didn't enjoy the taste of the chocolate. And uh, they were very on it. But then they were also, thank you, thank you, thank you, thanks. Uh, and uh, they said, do you have any water or anything? And we said, we said, no. Nah, nah. But, like, then we said, yeah, well, the food court, always, there seems to be always food for us uh, uh, somewhere. So we'll go get you a drink. Uh, so we ran and got them a drink of water. And then they spit out as much of the chocolate as they could. And then they went into this speech, kind of. They said, do you realize this chocolate is... Uh, and then I said, okay, they have some sort of uh, fancy, but I don't want to do like a fancy, like a European style. Because they said, oh, maybe they work at Stalin's. Maybe they were also copying Spence's because they'd never been to Stalin's before or Stolen's. Uh, so they said, uh, um, basically, they went about on the, this year, kind of a tirade about European chocolate is real. And that our chocolate, particularly chocolate in the store, was not real. And then we said, what do you mean? What? And they said, this is not real chocolate. Uh, and we said, well, can you explain more? And they said, well, like, or how do you know? And they said, believe me, I know uh, deep down to the depths of my heart uh, that this is not real chocolate. That's how I got stuck in here. And we said, well, no, no, this is a chocolate, this is like a fancy chocolate store. And then they just laughed. Uh, and they said, this is not real chocolate. Uh, and then we said, yeah, no, no, it's chocolate. It says right here on the box, right? Uh, and they said, okay, like, uh, and then Boyd said, like, uh, is this like one of these farming standards, right? This is the definition of the word chocolate. And the person just stared at them. Though slowly it was dawning on us who this person was, right? As they kind of got the chocolate off of them, we saw, we started to see, like, uh, I don't know. So you, you, you're catching my drift, I think. So then Boyd was like, uh, oh, like in Europe, uh, you have different standards for what you d- determine as chocolate. And uh, this person said, well... I guess, no, because we had chocolate first. Uh, and then Boyd said, no, he didn't, like, blah, blah, blah. Boyd knew the actual history of chocolate. And then the, the, the person said, okay, so we, well, okay, well, I have a very special relationship with chocolate that I can explain to you all because uh, I need your help anyway. And... uh but first they went again and said that uh, this chocolate is just not real chocolate. It's like imitation chocolate, which we said, no, no, it's chocolate. Uh, and Boyd said it, it's technically chocolate, but it's not the chocolate he's saying is chocolate. Uh, so let's just go with, like, their definition. Okay, so it's artificial chocolate. Can we say that? Uh, and they said, fine, artificial chocolate. Actually, that's right, science-based chocolate. Uh it's artificial. You're right. Uh, and then Boyd actually knew a lot of it. He said, oh, well, you know, like there is like a uh, cost savings that goes into it. But it's also about uh, what taste. At this point, we can't go back to the t- We can't get like uh, what is tastes good to you doesn't taste good to us. And Boyd said, have you heard of localized hot dog theory? And, and none of us had, not even, not them or anybody. And then they got into a discussion about the difference between hot dogs and sausages. So none of us were really listening. But we said, how did you get wrapped up in chocolate? Uh, like, because uh, it seems like you need help, right? Uh, how'd you? And they said it was a misguided attempt uh, to fix things. And uh, it's a long, 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 long story, they said. But, I, you know, I've been uh, on a journey of misery and loneliness. And uh, I thought I'd gotten to the end. And we said, well, what do you mean? Like, uh, 
And they said, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to count. I'm going to count the chocolate. Uh, we said, okay. But if we said, wait a second, this is a little different uh, than the movie. They're not to count the chocolate, you know. They're the count uh, after dark uh, and stay out of the sunlight. Uh, so we said, count the chocolate. And they said, you, have you, you've never heard my tale? It's a tale of woe. And we said, no, we haven't heard your tale. And then they said, well, I'll tell it to you then. Uh, and they said, uh, well, I have the talk. The, the, like, that's why I said no touching in my hands uh, or my lips, uh, my face, because I have the chocolate touch. And we said, what, the chocolate touch? And they said, yeah, the touch, chocolate touch, uh, watch. And then they touched uh, a uh, bo- box of chocolates, uh, and the box turned to chocolate. But then they said, open the box. And then we opened the box. The ribbon turned to, to chocolate, everything. We opened the box, and the chocolates inside were still the chocolates from Stalin's chocolates. And they said, see, like, the box is real chocolate, uh, and the chocolates inside are made of this imitation fake chocolate, which was confusing because we were trying to listen to their tale. And then we were tasting chocolate, and the box just tasted too chocolatey. We were like, this is too chocolatey. And they said, that's what real chocolate tastes like, children. They were very stern about that point. Uh, but we said, tell us your tale of misery and woe, please. And they said, a long, 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 long time ago, like, uh, but, but so long ago, I can't even remember everything. There was a time when I wandered, uh, the, yeah, all of all, all, like wandered the world. Uh, and I had already had this on me, this chocolate uh, touch. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's even a longer tale how I got the chocolate touch. But, yeah, just like other touches you've heard, anything I touch turns chocolate. But I had learned to use it to delight people. Uh, I mean, there were times I made mistakes. I also crashed a couple chocolate-based economies uh, by making too much chocolate. But I learned. Uh, and over time, uh, over a long, long period of time, uh, I would leave little chocolate surprises for people. Uh, and I would watch them enjoy it. Uh, but it always left me with a you know, lack of connection because I could only do it from afar. And then we looked at each other because we are like, okay, this is making sense, kind of like the uh, Franny. And then they told the tale of how then they wandered into this one town. And uh, it was uh, Vilma Vonka uh, who they... Uh, um, made them an uninvited or un, they were an invited guest that didn't say yes to the invitation kind of like us in the mall in a sense and they were asked to stay and uh, supply like because this Vilma Vanka knew they had the chocolate touch and so they used them like as a chocolate producer and they said yeah not, uh, like a uh, I didn't get to do anything other than touch things that would become chocolate. And it was mostly like stuff they got like from the guard, you know, like old barrels and, uh, and things. It wasn't fun. And, uh, cho- oh, by the way, my chocolate is delicious. Just, you know, you don't have the right taste buds because your taste buds have been developed on imitation chocolate. And we said, fine, fine. So anyway, get back to your tale. And they said, yeah. And eventually, Vilma Vanka, the castle, you probably heard of my castle, the Count of Chocolate's castle. Uh, she was the Countess to Chocolate uh, and maintained an illusion, you know, that I was her Count. And uh, but really, I was just there to make things into chocolate. And she developed a great chocolate empire. And a great castle isolated from the world where no one would know uh, that, like, uh, there was no real chocolate production going on. It was a mystery, right? How is she churning out that much chocolate? Does she have Zumba Zumbas working there? A lot of tales got woven, but it was really just me touching things that were salvageable goods, uh, Turns out, for some reason, those are better. Like, if, like you do a boulder, 
it has the same mass. So it took a lot of late, like just to answer that question to get a boulder in and then boulder back out. Uh, so anyway, so I was not happy about this, right? I had been, at least I enjoyed going out in the world and making things into chocolate, you know, chocolate tree wasn't great for the tree. Now I realize that I realized I was wrong, but, uh, so I, you know, plotted till I could get away, which I had to, you know, kind of, uh, believe it or not, I faked my, like, uh, that's uh, what why when you came in, I was trapped in chocolate. What I did with uh, uh, Vilma Vodka is I uh, f- slowly built my own sculpture of myself. And I kept telling her, if you don't let me go, I'll just like uh, turn myself in chocolate. And she said, I don't think you could do that uh, or you would. And I said, I will. I will. Like, I just want to roam free. But she never believed me. And she, because she was right, I couldn't, but I could fake it. So I faked it, uh, and I made my own chocolate sculpture in my room that I was always supposed to stay in when I wasn't turning things to chocolate. And she rushed in and I'll be honest, I turned her to chocolate for sure. Like, uh, then I just took over the enterprise and I lived at this great castle and that's pretty famous stuff, right? Uh, because that's where it got even like, uh, I decided I wanted to be around people again, right? And I tried. And uh, um, I'm trying to give you the shortest version. You all seem like you're falling asleep. Because we were kind of falling asleep to their, their story. Maybe it was like the, the chocolate uh, and just the smell of warm chocolate in the room. But it was also, it took us hours to break that chocolate off of the count. But the count said... Uh, so I lived in luxury and I kept the chocolate enterprise going, but eventually I grew tired of that as, you know, time wore on. And because I'm, uh, because of this, whatever it is, the chocolate touch, you know, I last forever. I think this is, has to do with like your chocolate doesn't melt with human warmth, uh, which is an important thing. Remember real chocolate melts with human warmth. Don't forget that, uh. And we said, why? And I said, well, my heart was empty, you know. And so that's when I met, you know, some of the people in the tale that I've come from, Harker and Renfield uh, and uh, Lucy and Mina. And we said, yeah, you, you're uh, like, and, and they said, no, no, let me tell you my side. Uh, I realize how it's portrayed. But I was lonely and then I heard about London. And I heard London was pretty sweet. I even read some books by Charles Dickens and stuff. And I said, that sounds like my kind of place. But what I didn't realize is that something about before uh, I worked with Vilma, like it it was like uh, the chocolate touch wasn't, uh, it separated me from people, but uh, there's something happened in that time that changed the intensity of my chocolate making. But I, I didn't realize it, but I said, I want to move to London. And even though I can't, uh, like, uh, you know, my, my lips and my hands can't touch people, maybe I could still, like, be around people because uh, uh, I still feel that urge. Uh, and I got a house in London, and I got a house with these beautiful balconies. And that's how Harker was going to arrange all that. We don't got time for some of the other ones, but Lucy and Mina, like I became the waving man of London. You may have heard of me, uh, but what happened was, uh, like that was, you know, I was waving at people and trying to create a connection with them, but something happened where with Lucy was the first one where it didn't just uh, like, it was no longer me just touching a physical touch that could turn something to chocolate. It became like a heart-based connection, uh, like my waving and, 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 and Lucy would stop and talk to me and call up and say, one day we should meet. And I said, no, no, no. Uh, and uh, so that, even though whatever they say in the tale, so like that's how Lucy, you know, did become a chocolate statue. And Mina, that's like uh, where she started to turn chocolate. And that's when they realized uh, 
if, uh, you know, if we can, you know, if uh, the chocolate touch her no longer exists in this realm, maybe we could get Mina to be non chocolate anymore. And yeah, when I got irritable, I also, you know, said, if you're going to uh, talk to me sternly, I may turn you to chocolate. I do have to give you a warning. But that was a low of the low for me because it was like anytime my heart felt a connection to someone and they may have been open to it, some sort of, uh, you know, non-physical, light, emotional intimacy, the most intimacy I'd had for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, can you imagine turning people to chocolate just by, it was not just a chocolate gaze. I know what you're thinking, but at the heart, if my heart gazed on you now, like I, 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 I could, I don't want to turn any of you into chocolate. Now the thing was, we were already asleep, uh, but it, like, uh, the thing was the count told us the story so many times, uh, but that's what the count said. That's what I need your help with, uh, it like, uh, figuring out, uh, why this artificial chocolate doesn't change. I believe your your fake chocolate is the key to my living a full, uh, rich life. Uh, and so I guess it will stop there because we were asleep. Uh, I was kind of barely awake. Everybody else was out cold, sleeping sound uh, with the count of chocolate. So we'll be back soon to talk more about this. Uh, good night, everybody. Everybody, I want to thank everybody that joined Sleep With Me Plus uh, or moved over recently. I want to thank you, Jill, Kayla, and Elizabeth. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Zoe, Risa, and Vicky. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Michelle, Megan, and Lindsay. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Jamie, Andrea, and Kathy. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Anna. Cassie and Benjamin, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good, good, good night. Colleen, Kaylin, and Josie, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Natalie, Peter, and Ashley, K, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Ashley A, uh, Elizabeth and Anna, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, L, B, and Rachel, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Lowell, Pamela and Dean. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Sleep with me exists as, because of all the people that support the show directly or support our sponsors. Uh, and, and that's why I take the time to thank people. And, uh, you know, the other thing uh, is, uh, is uh, like, uh, is uh, that, uh, uh, oh, Pete, if you want to support the show for free, join our referral program. You just sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, R E F E R. And uh, check it out there. Thank you so much and good night. All right, everybody. This is a week in review or week or month in review, actually. Uh, this comes at the end of Sleep With Me. And uh, I think from now on, I'll just put it in the bonus feed of Sleep With Me Plus, unless there's like an update uh, that's pressing. So if you're on Sleep With Me Plus, make sure, you know, you can all you can do everything from the main page at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. If you log in, uh, once you go to that page, you'll have access to all of your podcasts uh, uh, from Sleep With Me Plus. You could change your payment method, change your membership, join the Discord. All that happens just on that one page. It's just two clicks to add your podcast, your podcast app. And depending on what tier you're on, you have access to three or four uh, Sleep With Me Plus podcasts. So make sure to do that. That's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. And if you're listening to the free show, you may have heard me and other messages. We're really looking right now for um, uh, 1% of listeners to support the show who listen to the free podcast on a regular basis. Uh, it'll change the trajectory of Sleeping Me for you and 99 other people. Uh, but you also get all the sweet stuff I'm going to talk about. I also encourage the Sleeping Me Plus listeners to have a dedicated podcast app just for Sleep With Me Plus content uh, and then keep your whatever podcast app you use for your daytime podcast and just try out a new app. There's tons of great free podcast apps out there. But yeah, I'm going to run through Sleep With Me Plus, uh, what's come out in the past month. I'm going to start with the bonus episodes uh, in the bonus feed on uh, 
looks like the last episode that came out was uh, Tea with Bernie. That was April 27th. That's this new series that people really love. Welcome to Scooterville. And that's a posty special edition episode. Uh, then we had a bonus episode, depending on what the Boar Friends and Boar Besties, uh, where I talk about the video game Space Quest and play it. Uh, then on April 13th, we had another Welcome to Scooterville episode, Underground Picnic Munch episode. So, and then a Fearless Flyer episode came out in the, at the end of March. So a lot of cool stuff. Uh, May we'll have stuff and then subscriber summer stuff uh, coming out in the all intro and all night episode podcast uh, for those people, boar friends and boar besties. Uh, we uh, were trying, we tested out like this new thing without theme music and uh, got great feedback on that. So thank you everybody that, that upgraded to an annual pledge or took advantage of that uh uh, thing we're doing so yeah we had all intros come out on may 2nd uh an all night episode came out um that's all night um wait it comes out tonight uh today's thursday that i'm recording this yeah so that comes out tonight all night uh tng and cut new idea there if you listen to that um i think we have one more one or two more all night tng episodes to do uh, then we had uh, a couple all intro episodes uh, come out uh, May 2nd, uh, April 18th, uh, uh, April 11th was All Night Make Great Pets. Uh, the all night intro on April 3rd, April, March 20th, and Make Great Pets Part 1 on March 13th. Uh, then the story only feed and in the ad free feed, uh, both of those. We had uh, Sushi Go board game unboxing came out last night. Uh, our watch of Bring It On uh, part two came out on Sunday. And it wasn't until <laughs> after these episodes were like uh, that I learned that it was, oh, a, not another teen movie, that uh, the, the parody part from Bring It On that the phrase that got stuck in my head is from it only took three different episodes about bringing on for me to find out <laughs> it wasn't in any of the episodes of bringing on but a great time to reflect on bringing on and i didn't realize that uh kirsten dunce would be like uh, back in the spotlight in a cool way so cool cool timing uh for that uh then we had alba salix episode three came out fairy cake woods uh, multiplex cuckoo for cuckoo 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 cocoa for cuckoo for cocoa but cuckoo for cuckoo clocks uh episode seven our matrix crossover with the novelizers came out april 24th april 21st was birds and buds uh, which was alba salix episode two i've been getting a lot of emails from people that really like the alba salix content and again yeah and some people are not every episode for everybody uh, and that's usually what happens is, uh, like, uh, for every three episode, uh, emails I get, that is somebody's favorite episode. I get one email that was somebody's least favorite episode. That's just kind of the way it works with uh, stuff. That's why we work so hard as a team to um, invest the time to be able to keep this all this selection going and even adding on selections. But if you really believe in Alba Salix, uh we are paying them uh, to use their content. So uh, consider uh, supporting the show or uh, like being like, okay, like let me become an annual supporter because that's going to enable us to do that. We're, we're, we're doing all three seasons of Alba Salix. So uh, as we roll on from here, so, um, and yeah, and then uh, Multiplex episode six, bring it on part one and then bring it on intro. And then the Bring It On intro. So that's everything we did in the past uh, month or so. If you want to support the work we do here, uh, consider supporting the show on Sleep With Me Plus, uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. If you're not into a position to financially support the show, but you want to support the podcast, there's two great ways to do that. Check out our sponsors, test out a sponsor, test out a free trial, or refer people to the show. We just had two people across 
uh, the three referral uh, threshold, which gets them three months of ad-free and story-only podcasts. So consider doing that. Thanks so much.